My wife hey, loves the bracelet. Does she? Loves it. Cool. She, she is in love. She said, can I wear it in the bathtub? <laughs> <laughs> you say, well, maybe not so much. Yeah. Maybe the bathtub isn't That's the best it. spot for your bracelet. You can for a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll have to restring it because the leather will be worn out. Yeah. Howdy, everybody. Hello. Denny's wife loves her bracelet that we made for her on Wednesday, so that's exciting. I was actually going to ask you if you got it finished. Oh, yeah. Because mine is still where I left it the other day. <laughs> oh, I finished it. I finished it. So we have got, sorry, I'm just cleaning the remainder of the laser in residue off of our lovely owl here. We have an awesome, I'm pretty excited about this. I've been excited since Monday. And I... I, I text, Denny responded to my text this week. I started sending him some text messages, and I got four whole words in response. What? And four different responses. <laughs> <laughs> and yep, and yes, and okay. <laughs> that was right. That was, that's what we got. But, um, so, I'm super excited. This will be a three-part video once we get it all there, but we are waiting for a couple other parts uh, to finish up. We're having some dies made for these, which we will talk about here in a little bit. Um, but otherwise, we're going to get started on a bag front for this bag, but we're going to do some stone inlays. Yeah. And Denny is a little nervous about it, but he's going to, it's going to be great. I'm not nervous. I'm apprehensive. How's that? <laughs> apprehensive. <laughs> he says he doesn't know. So what we've done is I found this cool um, geometric yeah. uh, owl. Owl in flight. On the interwebs. This was a just an Adobe image that we found. So we customized it just a little bit so that it would work for the stone inlays that we are doing. Um, Tony's going to come zoom us in here a little bit. And... So find whatever owl it is that you want to use. Or I think, do you think it would be okay if we attach this image, or do you think that's a bad idea? I think that's a bad idea, Ben, that you have to have Adobe. To yeah. Do All right. Be breaking. So this image won't be one that we attach. We do own the Adobe Suites here at Springfield Leather because we use them for everything that we do. Um, but this is not an image that we will just hand out on the video because it is an Adobe image. So we did Pick one of your own. Yeah. Something you like. Yeah, do something fun. Um, I typed in flying owl line art. There's a whole bunch of free ones on the interwebs. So. I see some good ones. Yeah, yeah. Or if you own the Adobe Suite, this is in the image. Or you can yeah, you could probably purchase it. I suppose we could put a link to the image that then they or like a link to the the one. It's not hard to find. I trust your guys' interneting skills. You're here with us today. That takes some interneting skills. In any case, all right. I'm done cleaning. Clean a little bit more later. So Denny's got his bag panel cut out. Stacy went through and put this little owl in the glow forge, got them all lasered out yeah. for us. And we're going to do some stone inlays. Yeah. Let's show them the bag we're actually going to try and make sort of like. So this is kind of the bag style that we are mimicking. Um, we have done our own little design here on some handle toppers. So these um, are cutting dies. We have two different widths of this style handle um, on the way. Hopefully they will be here in the next week or so. We'll start getting item numbers made um, so that we can sell just these panels. But this was kind of the idea. So when we were in, in uh, Dallas this year, we bought a couple of these as some examples and wanted to do our own for you guys. So this is the style of bag that we will be yeah. uh, making. Yeah. This is kind of what it's gonna. What would you call this style of bag? Have a name? Sort of a tote, wouldn't you think? I don't think tote. Western. Yes. Closed up. Open, closed tote. It'd be better if it was an open, open closed tote. It's an open closed tote. <laughs> you can use it open or you can also use it closed. 
<laughs> However you want to carry your tote. It's an open, closed you tote. You carry it by one handle and it'll be open. I did discover that this is called a yoke, though. So when we were trying to figure out what dye name to call this, um, this was a purse yoke, just like tote on yoke. your chat. It's a tote yoke. <laughs> So open closed tote yoke. It's open, open, closed tote open, yoke. Tote, <laughs> I don't feel like you guys are having as much fun as we are. <laughs> All, right. All right. So that's that's the that's the end goal. And I really don't know where to start here. All right. So I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going here's to our, start. Here's our rocks. So we have six stones to put in this bird. So we're gonna put. We've got a couple abalone shells here that will be placed in the wings. We're going to do these little guys up in this top feather. And then we've got two pieces of what I think are some sort of onyx. Looks like or obsidian. Obsidian, yeah. Maybe like gold yeah. obsidian. They have like a sheen in their eyes yeah. for his eyes. So that's what Denny's going to attempt to do today. <laughs> Good description. <laughs> And if this doesn't work, he has a few weeks to get it right. <laughs> All right. I guess the first thing to do is let's cut out the holes for these different parts. You know what would be perfect for us today? What? We should put down our spearmint card. Our sp <laughs> Good idea, because this is purely spearmental. <laughs> Incoming. Look at that. This yeah. is what we're doing today. We're yeah. spearminting. <laughs> when in doubt, spearmint. All right. Thank you, Nick. All right. And where do you th what do you think I ought to do with these? Should I leave a little bit around the outside, or should I should I go all the way like that? Well, I think if you leave a little bit, then the stone can be placed right at the edge, but then you'll have a little bit of a lip over it. Okay. So I would probably yeah cut that. I will cut this. Or maybe what you should do is we should lay it here, and then you trace it, and then you cut in an eighth of an inch. What do you think about that? Okay. Okay. You need some Bic? Nope. <laughs> I got a finger. <laughs> This is a pretty exciting experiment. <laughs> About like that? Mm hmm. Yep, yeah, and then just cut it inside cut it that. And an eighth of an inch, approximately. Now, let me mark this. Thanks, Tony. So get it oh, <laughs> Okay. These aside, let me set all of these aside over here by the spearmint card. <laughs> I love that card. I know, it's great. <laughs> all right, now I'm just going to use these little uh, half round punches. Probably going to use this smaller one. Probably won't work. Long enough not to exit. Mm, there you go. <laughs> oh, sorry, Luna. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't do the banging. Right at the bottom of this little black wing feather. Oh, 
All right. Let's see what that looks like. I think it looks good. I think that'll work. Two little pin feather holes there. Scoot it down a little bit. It'll be fine. I wonder if we turned it. Oh, yeah. Put them at the top or the bottom. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Really All right. Okay. Well, let's try the other one. Let's do that again. I had such good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. I get the eyes the wrong size. One one size and the other another. This one's a, a goggle-eyed owl. <laughs> You're a little close to the bottom. He's a googly eyed owl. Yeah. Hey Josh, how you doing? I got my Chevy shoes on. I saw that. I wore mine the other day. I washed mine last night. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I had to make sure to scrub down the sole every time I wear them. Why is that? Oh, because they're, they're white. white. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Remember now. <laughs> turn, turn those little yeah. bead holes. All right, so we got our wings. We got our little wing inlays there. All right, now let's do the top of the wing. And I need to make, should I make it just a hair smaller also? Yeah, I was actually kind of thinking you could just go around and just cut like an eighth inch inside okay. of that line down to your little tip. I guess they're both the same. They're, they? Yeah, they're pretty similar. I think they're close enough. Hello, Omar. Perfect doesn't happen very often in my world. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit farther in. Yeah. Is that like that? I think so. Gotta, we gotta be quiet because we're spearmen. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's difficult to spearmint and also talk about it. Yeah, this kind of hush hush. <laughs> Christine is here. She wants to craft alongside of us. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty excited to see how this turns out. I think it's going to be pretty. Oh, Randy Myers, pretty. the stone that he got. Uh huh. He made a ring. Ooh, did he send a picture? I don't know. No, he didn't send a picture. Oh, okay. Wow, already? I feel like I just... He got them earlier this week. I think when we cement it down and... and it'll be good. ...around the outside, that'll be good. Yeah. I'll take a lighter from the underside and burn those little... Oh, that's a good shot outside. right there. So who's just going to... Yeah. It's almost right like there. an eyeball that's trying to poke itself out of something. That's right. <laughs> it's a wing ball. <laughs> All right. Let's do that again. <laughs> to do these, Denny's just using our... Was that the 25 millimeter, 20 millimeter? I'm not sure. Okay. You call it. Well, he's, yeah, he's got all these, just our little finesse corner punches. Yeah. They're, they're pretty cheap little doodads, but once you get it, you can polish it right up and. Yeah, they work. They're pretty they handy. Work. Yeah. 
They aren't made to cut steel pipe with you guys. No? No. Copper. Probably not that either. <laughs> Don't cut pipe with them. How many of you guys out there do have lasers? I know that that's becoming a thing that's a little bit more accessible to kind of mainstream over the last several years. So I'm kind of curious to see how many of you guys actually own one. Maybe they don't own it. Maybe they just stole it. Maybe. Well, I mean, if you stole it, then yeah, you, still, you, you still own it. Possession, own it. possession is just, nine tenths of the law. I, exactly. You may not still own it. You just possess it. <laughs> a little. Uh, yeah. Donut? I think so. Yeah, I think that's pretty okay. And Denny, really, I just think you should just cut that eye out. Just cut the whole eye out. I think so. I think you should just cut the whole eye out. Okay, that eye is coming out of there. Denny's going to be an obstetrician. No, you're going to have to hand cut that. You think? Yeah, because I'm afraid if you do that, it's going to be too big. I think you just need to follow that line and then come the up inside and correct. The inside mm -hmm. the line or outside? Yeah, the inside. Okay. Hello, Forge. <clears throat> Crystal got one for Christmas. I have a tiny one that I use the heck out of. Nice. We got two Glowforge owners. Randy posted one, he said, and the friend's friend the weather. I have not been social mediating very much. Yeah, I haven't either. Over there. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Get a little more. Actually, I almost wonder like if that. you could go from the back and cut it at an angle so that well, you don't have. No. You understand what I'm getting at? Yeah. Angle this way. Yeah, just to kind of cut some of the yeah. fibers down on the inside. Randy's pretty dang handy. So he says, happy anniversary to his wife. Going to be a leather tycoon I am today without 13 years married to her. Aww. Brass snap turned into a turquoise, turquoise ring. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. Yeah. Let me switch to the overhead camera. And oh, here's, we should go right here. Well, look what he did it from. Crazy. Just go side to side. No, because I zoomed in. Oh, okay. So there's. So he took the the end of that brass. Yeah. Come on, Cam. Snap. And made a yield ring out of it. That is oh, not. Cool. What are yeah. you going to do with a little baby piece? Very cool. Come on, camera. Very nice. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Randy. Happy anniversary. I think what I'm going to have to do is just take a, a black uh, marker and paint oh, it. Oh, just uh, color it a little bit. Because I can't cut that at enough of an angle to. Okay. I need to work on that anyway because it's a little bit ragged. You hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> we got a raggedy eye. I don't think I would have ever thought to use a brass swivel snap to make a ring out of. Down there close to the swamps like he is, you gotta you you gotta be you gotta use your ingenuity. Oh, that is the baby one. Oh, I thought it was the large one. Very cool. Maybe a pendant. Nice. Maybe you should make a brass pendant. Uh, the leather that we've got here is our Tiffany Blue Biker, our lightweight biker leather. If anybody was curious, 
So it should just be on the website. I'm pretty sure if you type in Tiffany Blue, it's going to be one of the only things that comes up. I need to go get... We don't have any little nippy, nipper scissors here, do we? Uh, some snips? Yeah. I do have some snips here. Denny got a new watch? Huh? You got a new watch? Yes, I did a while back. Yeah? Is it that green one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we talked about... Maybe when you were gone, we talked about it. Let me go get it. Okay, you go You go get yours. Black I'm going to... Black marker. Okay. I'm going to work on cleaning this guy up a little bit more. It's sending again. Hey, we're back. I don't, I don't know if we went away. Maybe that's why the chat is so sad. Sad chat? Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't send her the name of it. I sent her pictures though. Did she use them? I don't know. <laughs> I think she did. She wants a necklace, but the big one Randy really says. Nice. And Justin, who runs the, the cameras when either Tony's not here or we're doing live shopping, he's also been making leather rings lately. He's been having a good time doing that. So for you guys out there, when you do your lasering, what's your favorite product to use to clean the soot off of your leather when you're done. We typically use Bic One. That's what I'm using now. Does anybody have a another preference that they like more? Well, Bic One or Bic Four, but also Greedy does a nice job, but it does darken a little bit more. What is it? Rudy's. Oh. Leather conditioner or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. It has a better smell to it, but it does darken. Yeah, I think this is actually so this nice and firm. Yeah. Let me get that. That, that does look pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I'll probably keep cleaning this, but. Let me see if I can come out. Ooh. Danny's burning. You can't see it, but we're burning. You can't see it now? Burning. <laughs> burning. burning all those fuzzies. Mm -hmm. Angel's deglazer takes resin off very well. Takes resin off. Okay. You have a big one there, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now. This little bird. <laughs> We're going to color in our eyeballs. Hey, Chris. Been a minute. Welcome. Ooh, a magic eraser sponge. I feel like I'm just like moving things very carefully around my feet so that I don't get my shoes dirty. I know, right? <laughs> I feel like I'm walking totally different than I would normally. finally got my shoes to stop rubbing on my little toes. They've, they've, I, I think kind of like are starting to mold to my feet a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Cause I typically like, I typically wear a, um, like a minimum, a very minimal style shoe. I wear, uh, Vivo barefoots for the most part and they have a really wide toe box. And so my little toesies are used to having all of this room, all sorts of room. up in my toe box and, um, just normal shoes don't have that. And so then my little pinky gets rubbed on and it takes me a few times wearing a shoe to get used to it. That or maybe piggy, it stretches out. I don't know. That little piggy wants to go home. Yeah. But he's confined. How's it going, Denny? Fine. I'm customizing this because I, I did it unintentionally. So now I have to do it intentionally <laughs> on the other side. You giving him some eyeliner? Yeah, I'm experimenting here. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Yeah. 
All right, move your fingers now. Everybody can see. We're a one-eyed bird. Yeah, a shiny eye. All right. Uh, so now we have all of our holes cut. Now. so I don't lose them in transit. And I've got, I already, this is just a piece of about two, two three ounce leather mm -hmm. that I use for a, a liner on the back side. And I've marked some points here. I marked uh, the tip of each wing. I marked those two points. Marked the tip of each ear. Okay. Those are, or horn. It's, it's a horns. horned owl. <laughs> The top tip of each horn and the bottom, the tip of each side of its tail. So, what I'm going to do here, poke a little hole there. Try and match that up. Hey, Jessa. On the other side. All right. It's going okay. The reason it's important to locate this is because I'm going to draw a little spot here where each stone goes, and we're going to glue the stone to this backing. Okay. And then we're going to lay the whole thing on top of there. All right. And if the stones aren't in the right spot, it's going to be goggle-eyed owl. <laughs> we don't want a googly-eyed owl. <laughs> hey, Mary. Thanks, Eric. We like you. Mary, we're just glad you're here. Okay. Got all of our stones marked. Now, what should we use to glue those down with? What oh, do we have Rinia. We, we, we use that would be the best. Yeah, we used Rinia um, when Kevin was doing it. Remember, and it worked really well. Price tag on the back. Off the back of these. Oh, yeah. I need to squirt it on this leather, can't I? I think so, yeah. Set up. Um, Gomer, yes, there's, so, lasering your leather is going to be an experiment. Veg tan probably lasers the best. Um, veg tan is the most ideal, and it has the least amount of chemicals, so it is the cleanest to burn. Um, I just want to specify that we laser a lot of things here that um, one may or may not want to laser at home, depending on your ventilation situation. So ventilation is a really big deal when it comes to lasering. It is burning the surface of the leather off. Um, woo, Charles! Yeah. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Felt like a Charles moment right there. Um, I finally let go. <laughs> Got the plug out and everything just followed. So, um, veg tan is the safest to laser. 
You can laser chrome tan leathers. We do it here. This is a chrome tan leather. Um, but if you do not have the correct ventilation for your specific laser, it's probably not ideal because you don't want to be breathing in the carcinogens that's produced when you laser. And then also some le leathers just don't laser that well. If it's too thin, you can cut all the way through it. I mean, this is pretty thin leather. It's two to three ounces. So, um, you know, it's, but it, it still worked just fine. But if you start, you know, trying to laser out pig skin, it's probably not going to go very well because you're working with like a one ounce leather. Um, says morning from Minnesota. Well, hello. Sorry, and then Wayne from South Carolina. Um, and so otherwise it's, it's just kind of an experiment on whether or not it'll laser. Sometimes some leathers just don't look well. Like obviously if you have a really dark leather, it's not going to show up very much or um, certain types of leather, you just have a hard time getting the image to look very crisp or good. Like a heavily pebble grain leather isn't going to um, engrave as nicely as something that's smooth. We do a lot of experimenting with leathers and engraving because we do have a a pretty good setup, I feel like, for ventilation. Um, the ventilation setup is good, especially back in the laser department. Yeah, yeah. The one that's on the floor has a unit. Is the Glowforge unit. Yeah, so on our retail floor, we do have a filter um, that they sell. I think it's like a thousand bucks. I don't know if it's gone up since we got that one. Um, but you can buy, if you do not have an option to vent to the outside, they do have a filter unit that you can purchase, but it is not the cheapest thing. Um, it is a heavy, heavy box. We've taken it with us to Farm Fest now and again, and it's not the funnest to move. The little hole is in the wrong spot. Maybe not. What hole's in the wrong spot? This, these abalone cabs have a hole on either side of them. Oh. Because they're really beads. Buttons. But then he didn't put any glue on the blue leather, so things are still maybe slightly mobile. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I like like I said, there's if you do if you go on Glowforge or if you buy Glowforge specific leathers, they are only vegetable tan and they only recommend that you laser on veg tan. Um but also, you know, like as companies, that's just better for business. You don't want to get sued cuz you recommended something that maybe if somebody isn't being as careful there's as no, they need to be There's no way to tell what is exactly in the chromium that the, the, the oh, a sponge. Yeah. There's certain chemicals that act very poorly with lasers. Yeah. Didn't we have a little spongy guy? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. That doesn't mean this type. Well, we did have a spatula, Denny. Uh, let me see what else. Can I get you one? I have a glove. You could use your finger. Yeah, just give me a glove. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably better with my finger anyway. <laughs> Gomer googled chrome tan laser stuff and it was like looking up uh like medicinal side effects and yeah so there's no if you have proper ventilation um or you know get one of those crazy like n95 like ventilate that like, people use when they're doing metal work like my husband has whenever he's doing his knife making like get one of those and run your laser if it's not vented properly, but 
you should really just, if you do have a laser, it is very important to vent it properly, even if you're just lasering on vegetable tan leather. I'm just going to say that. Venting is important. And it also, it can affect the lifetime of your, like, the bulb in your laser, the lens, all of those things. If you're not venting that soot out as you're engraving, um, it affects your machine. So it's just not good maintenance for your machine if you're not venting. So that's, that's my vent on venting. <laughs> But um, bum For anybody that's going to be in Sheridan this year, um, we will be doing a laser engraving class. And not me. I'm not going to be doing it. But Chad will be there. Captain No Fun will be in the house doing a laser class. So you can always sign up to take that. Mm. Yeah, those cowboy leathers, they do, they do laser really well. Most, a lot of your oil tans will laser, like we, oil, we laser a lot of oil tan leathers here. Um, and for the most part they do. If it's like super, super oily, sometimes that can be an issue in the laser. Um, but. Yeah, all lasers are loud. You can hear, even if you're not in the same building as our lasers, when they're running, you can hear them. But it's also, I mean, the exhaust, that's all those things. I'll have to clean those eyes up after everything, after the cement sets up good. How's your spearmint going? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's spearmental, but I think it's gonna work. A lot of this stuff, you just gotta mess with it until it does what you're begging it to do. Have you ever had anything catch on fire in a laser? Um, I think sometimes like we've lasered grade hair on before, and I feel like maybe we've there's might have been a little spark. I don't actually think we've really had too many fire issues. Tony, do you remember any fires? No, I don't know that we've had any. No, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Just in case I'll shoot the listener. <laughs> <laughs> Never had a fire. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of water in this building. I don't think we've really had fire issues. <laughs> Mostly we have water issues, which are getting fixed. The roof is going on. I'm surprised we still have a skylight in here. Is our skylight going away? I'm assuming that the skylight will be going away at some point. Oh, yes. I know that it will. They're covering up one right now and mm. they're taking it out at the moment. I know. I'm going to miss it. You yeah. missed the skylight? Yeah, it's nice. I mean, we're in a concrete dungeon. So if we don't have the skylight, all we have is two windows to a hallway. That's not, that's not nice. <laughs> Yay for seeing other people that are also inside. <laughs> right here. <laughs> I might have to do some behind the scenes adjustment. <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, we should have had a modeler. Oh, let me see your little pokey guy over there. This? No, no, there. Yeah. Let's go scooch. You know what's great about leather? What? It stretches. Yes, it does. Sometimes it stretches when you don't want it to. <laughs> Sometimes it won't stretch as much as you want it to. Yeah. You know, I don't think those holes are going to be seen by anybody. I don't either. All righty. So we've got, we've got six stone inlays. Denny's going to do a little post video finagling, but... 
I feel like that's pretty darn cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So once we get the bag, and I don't know, th these are Denny's panels that we use for our, our dye. Uh, manufacturing needs. So we may or may not keep these ones or we might have them tool some other ones with some wood grain or yeah. something. I don't know. We haven't decided yet. But Ow owl grain. Some owl grain, some feathers. Yeah, maybe feathers. Ooh, I could, you could do some feathers. I you could do those symmetrical it. feathers. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try that. Yeah, we're done banging. Thanks. <laughs> Did you skive the holes down? No, this is this is no, thin this leather. Is, yeah, this is just yeah. what three to four ounces. Two to three. Two I to think. three yeah. ounces. So we didn't need to. If we were doing uh, anything heavier than that, I would definitely skype them down. Yeah. So this is so this this is a pretty high cab. The rest of these are lower profile cabochons. Um, so we there there wasn't really any skiving necessary here. Yeah. yeah, and these here they look good just the way they. Mm -hmm. they are. It, it crawls up on them nice. Crawls up on them. Yeah. Well, guys, that is, that's what we're doing today on this one. So we've got, you know, we just glued this back panel. This purse will be lined when it's all, oops, when it's all said and done. Um, so this won't be seen. But we do have that nice little lined section, which also firms up the front so that it won't be quite as floppy. Nobody wants a floppy owl. Nobody wants a floppy owl. Well, especially when you got stones in it because you don't want them falling out. So, hello, Loons. How are you? I'm back oh. since you guys are done banging around. I'm back. I know. Denny's a rock star. Star. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you yeah, zoom dude. in a bit? Huh? Oh, on the. Oh, yeah. Looks pretty darn good. I like the abalone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we got. And the, the eyes really show up more than I thought they were going to, those black eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They, I do think that they are at, um, obsidian. Obsidian, yeah, because yeah, when, when you look at them, they have like this shimmer that goes back and forth like a gold obsidian. Is it available right away? Is what available right away? Uh, he can go back on YouTube and just click backwards in time, and it'll take him back mm -hmm. to the beginning. Yeah, so we did this, and then I also have another video scheduled um, doing an inlay in veg tan. So Denny will be tooling. He'll be tooling an owl, guys. We've got a tooled owl also on the schedule here in about a month or two. Um, and then he'll do the eyes in some turquoise stones. Yeah, and that will have to be skived. And, yeah, so that will be skived when we do that. Uh, so just a, a little bit of a different style of inlay. Um, just to kind of round it out. But we also have, if you are looking to inlay stones, we have a couple other videos. Um, I think Kevin did one in a bag, and then Denny has also done one doing, like, cuffs and things. So lots of material there for you to look at and, and go over. But So we're going to leave this here. Um, next week is... I forget. What is next week, Tony? Uh, the next week after this one. Next Wednesday, what are we doing? Working, you're going to be doing a rain rounder, Denny. Right. Oh yeah, the rain rounder. Yeah, and I think did you talk to Spencer? No, I will. Okay, I will. He was he was thinking about talking to Spencer to have Spencer do some braiding. And we'll use the rain rounder on the braiding. That's right. And then on Friday, Denny will be all by his lonesome because I am headed to Vegas for the weekend. And I will also be gone. <laughs> Tony has some umping to do, so I think Denny and Spencer will do something fun. With Maybe his. we'll both come in. Spencer is a, is a really good tooler. Maybe he we'll is. both come in and tool something. Well, that would be fun. He can tool something and I'll tool something. 
I think that would be fun. Justin's going to hate you for that, but it'll be fine. And then the next week after that is Ed Labar week. That's right. So Ed Labar, that is correct. If you um, are still interested, we do still have some openings um, for his classes. If you would like to come, check that out. Um, otherwise, I think I will start calling people next week. So if you have signed up for his class already and haven't paid, I'm going to start reaching out to people, and we're going to get that all lined out. If you're um, knowledgeable with the computer and you would like to join virtually, I'm looking at hand-picking a few virtual people. Send us an email live at springfieldleather.com. All right. And you can sign up virtually. But send me send me an email first, and then we'll get it figured out from there. You can virtually sign up. Well, you have to virtually sign up. But if you'd like to do it, if you'd like to do it through a Zoom, send me live at Springfield Leather. That's right. All righty, guys. Well, we appreciate your time, and we hope you have a lovely, lovely weekend. And we will be back next week. Bye. Bye.